Okay, hi. Now let's have a look at this Apogee Maestro mixer in some detail, okay? Because it can do a lot of things. Okay, first of all, looking now at the control panel side where you set all the inputs, okay? I've got two, I've got the two inputs set as instrument inputs, and I've got a drum machine plugged into the two quarter inch unbalanced inputs, okay? So, first of all, you set up the input levels of the preamps here. So I press play on the drum machine the signals are coming in and then I use either the mouse to adjust these rotary controls to adjust the input level of the preamps or I use the centre rotary encoder. Now I'm adjusting input 1, you can see it going up and down. So I set that and I click again to go to input 2 and look I'm adjusting input 2 so I set that. Okay, I've now set the input gain of the two preamps and I leave that. Okay, now let's look at the mixer. The mixer's in its default mode. It's all kind of greyed out, but the meters work. And down at the bottom it says two hardware, and that says none. Can you see that down at the bottom there? Okay. So the meters are showing me the levels coming in on my two line inputs, as are the two meters on the front panel of the duet, because I have got one of the inputs selected up with the rotary encoder. <coughs> Pardon me. If you have either of the inputs selected with the rotary encoder, um, if either of these input lights are lit up, the meters will show activity on either input. Okay. But if I let me just change this. Hang on. Okay, that's all set. All right. Now, if I now cycle around using the Duet controller and I turn up the volume, nothing. And that's because the Duet Mixer is in sort of its default off mode to hardware is set to none and basically I'm, I can see the metering for my input gain of my two inputs but nothing's getting around to the Duet output. Okay, So what you do then, if you're not using a host sequencer now that is, you would um, activate the two hardware selector, so it now says out, left, right, and that now brings the actual mixer into play. The metering um, relates purely to the level coming into the mixer from the preamp, so now if you raise or lower these faders, you're not adjusting the preamps, the metering just shows the preamp level, right, as set by the preamps, but what you're doing in effect is you're now able to raise these input faders to adjust the level after the input preamps of the signal being fed to the duet outputs. And now you can see on the other side the output meters are working away. And if I look down at the duet, which is now in output position with the out light lit, I'm getting a signal at my output. And if I raise the output, you can hear the inputs, the two in drum machine inputs. All right. Okay. So that's one thing this duet mixer does allows you to route the inputs to the output <coughs> and adjust the level as you like completely independently of the input level you've set with the preamp gains. Okay. You've also got this middle channel from software. Now if I set this mixer back how it was and set the Act 2 hardware back to none, if I bring up Logic okay, and I hit play and then bring up the Apogee control mixer again. The From Software channel is showing the logic output on the meters and that is being passed around to the duet. Okay. And if I turn up the volume, there's the output from logic. So that's how that works. Okay. But if I activate the mixer, okay, now I can adjust the level coming from my software, whatever it is, whether it's logic or whatever. I don't need to adjust the final output in logic, I can leave that alone and I can use this pair of faders on the From Software channel to adjust how much of the output of logic is going to be sent to the Duet's outputs. All right? So that's one way that you use the mixer. Now let's see how do you how you'd use it in a typical recording scenario. I'll turn this off again. Alright, there we are. 
I asked back to its default. I'll stop logic. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is um, I'll unplug the line inputs. And I've got a mic plugged into XLR input 1. So I'll go back to my Maestro control panel over there. Do, 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 and I set this to XLR mic. I'm going to activate 48 volt phantom power and I'm going to activate the phase switch because this mic lead I'm using is wired the other way around. Okay, so now I talk into the mic do, 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 and raise the input level of that preamp until I get a nice level okay and there's the level on the metering of the Maestro mixer back at Logic I get my record track, my audio track, and I'm going to make it mono this time okay and put it into record ready okay and when I talk into the mic the signal leaves the, the Apogee preamp as I've set the level with the gain control and arrives at this logic track and I can then adjust the level I want that to be recorded at. Okay, and now that's, that's the mic signal arriving at my record track. So we go back to the Apogee panel and look. Okay, so the mic's getting to the logic track and there's the, uh, there's the mic signal on the Apogee mixer, but there's nothing getting around um, to the output for me to monitor. Okay, now, in the traditional scenario, you'd go to your logic audio control panel or, or Cubase or whatever, and you'd set software monitoring on, which on most of the major sequences, software monitoring is on by default. And that means anything arriving at an audio track is bounced back around to the output of the sequencer. And that's what's happening now. I'm talking into the mic, the signal's being set by the input gain, going to the audio track, passing through that via software monitoring, and is arriving back at my From Software channel, and going to the Duet outputs. And if I turn up the level, there's the mic. Do, do, do. Right, okay. So now I can hit play on the sequencer. And remember, when I hit play on the sequencer, that will also come back on this from software channel. And I'll get the mic passing through with software monitoring and the playback of the audio track, and I can record my vocal over it. So I hit play. And now this from software channel is carrying the music and my vocal. One, two, one, two. But the vocal is too low now relative to the music. So the other thing you can do, the other way you can use it is like this, you can turn software monitoring off. Okay, so the input mic coming in on that audio track is no longer being bounced around to the From Software channel on the Duet Mixer. All I've got when I turn it up is the backing. All right, But I can now activate the mixer like that and I can adjust the level of the backing from Logic All right which does not contain my mic being passed through because software monitoring is switched off. And then I can adjust the level of the input after the preamp being fed around to the Duet output and adjust the mic level relative to the software playback level to get the mic balanced to the backing how I want it. And both the mic and the backing music arrive at the Duet outputs. And when I turn it up now, the backing music, you can hear the mic and I can raise the backing music to suit. And that's another way you can use it like that, you see. Whoa! I'm going to turn it down before I bring the mic near the speakers. <laughs> okay, so that's the couple of different ways you can use that duet um, mixer. And I've just got time to show you. Oh, yeah, one thing is um, you set the Apogee's latency in your host sequencer's audio control you know, preferences panel, and that's where I've set it to 32 samples, which gives unnoticeable latency. And the other thing is to show you the Apogee control panel built into Logic. If you go to Logic, Options, Audio, Open Apogee control panel, there's the Apogee control panel that's built into Logic. And I won't show you it in any detail at all. I'm just, it's just a copy of the Maestro control panel, but without all the graphics. And that allows you to quickly access your input settings and adjust them without having to open the Maestro control panel all the time. Okay. All right, so that's a look at what the mixer does. And now we can do a shumming up of this quite wonderful device, I must say.